Hello and welcome to the next installment of Law & Order, the video series where I look at and unpack stories from games. In this one we'll be looking at the story behind the amnesia short story, Justine. I previously did a video on The Dark Descent, if you haven't seen it the link is up there, but the link between these two games wasn't really strong enough to include it in that video. There are certain connections though which we'll discuss in this one. I'll be doing a machine for pigs at some point followed by a video on Amnesia Rebirth, so please keep an eye out for those as well. I know it's an old game and you've probably played it already, but there will be spoilers for The Dark Descent, Justine obviously, and potentially Rebirth too. But with all that out of the way, let's begin. A young French woman wakes up in a cell in 1858, and like Daniel in The Dark Descent, cannot remember anything, she has amnesia. She finds a gramophone rigged up to release the cell door upon being played, and the gramophone features the voice of a twisted woman named Justine, who welcomes the young woman to her cabinet of perturbation, her study of the human psyche. She moves into the next room, which appears to be a cell block, and in one of the cells is a man lying down, strapped to a bench. The young woman has a choice, to pull the lever next to his cell, which, whilst providing a ladder to escape the area, would actually serve a double purpose, with the other being a spike which pierces the prisoner's chest. Lucky for this young woman and the prisoner too, she manages to find a ladder, and manages to escape whilst sparing the man's life. As she progresses further through these tests, she finds more gramophones featuring the sadistic Justine, as well as two more prisoners one being located behind a wall in the library and another in a cell in the dungeon. She also encounters terrifying monsters known as the Suitors, more on them later on. After killing or sparing these men, the young woman, upon escaping the Suitors, hears Justine speaking to her through yet another recording, and the walls begin to close in, and the young woman passes out. The walls stop and reset, and then the young woman comes to and congratulates herself on this one being the best one yet. Turns out that this young woman is Justine, and upon walking up the stairs, her maid states that their guests will soon be arriving for dinner. The game then ends. So, like I said, really short, and that's pretty much it for the plot. As I said, a short game, short plot. But there is lots to discuss and unpack, so let's start with Justine herself. Justine Florbel was a young woman of French aristocracy. Childhood wasn't plain sailing for Justine though, as she suffered from a mental illness, but it's not too clear what that was. As detailed from game notes, Justine only really had one friend, a child named Clarisse. They were around the same age, and they would play together, despite Clarisse being a child of one of the servants. This then led to Clarisse being told off by the maids, because at that time, children of nobility wouldn't be allowed to mix with common folk, so to speak. Anyway, Justine's father, Monsieur Florbel, was a renowned and famous psychotherapist. Monsieur Florbel had his own demons though and was very odd himself. Due to his profession, he had a fascination with the human mind and the human psyche, and as a result he chose to perform tests and examinations on his young daughter. Justine and Clarice would no longer play together and Justine, still a very young child at 8 years old, grew lonely and she had no friends. Justine's mother died when she was very very young and she would frequently ask her father what her mother looked like, and her father would tell her that her beauty was blinding. As innocent as this may be, this affected Justine, who developed issues in regard to her own beauty, and wanting to be as blindingly beautiful as her late mother. Over the years, and after many failed tests, Justine and her father became estranged. She would eventually come to develop into a complete narcissistic psychopath. She would ultimately end up murdering her father at 10 years of age using the family's star-shaped soapstone, basically like an orb. I can still see him, lying there on the floor. He looked so surprised. The star-shaped soapstone stained by his blood fell to the floor with a sonorous thud. Blame me not, for I was but a child. With careful ambition, I dared a smile. Rest in peace, Papa. She would go on to inherit the family estate, but this was just the beginning. So after her father died, Justine kind of followed in her father's footsteps. Key difference here though was that Justine's father wanted to research mental illness and to find ways of treating it, but Justine, well, she turned it into a torture chamber and named it her Cabinet of Perturbation. If you aren't aware, the definition of perturbation is an anxiety 
or a mental uneasiness. How fitting. At some point, Justine began a relationship with a young man named Alwa Racine, who was the son of a noble man called Lucius Racine. Alwa actually had a family and a career, but sacrificed both in favour of pursuing an affair with Justine. Alwa just wasn't interested in Justine though, he was infatuated with her. But Alwa wasn't enough for the narcissistic Justine, who was also in relationships with two other men. Scandalous. These two men were Basile Giroux and Malo de Vigny. All three men were very much aware of what Justine was up to. She would play them off against each other, manipulating them, but despite this, they all continued to vie for her affection. In one particular newspaper article, we see that Malo de Vigny was a virtuoso violinist who was performing but was heavily intoxicated and as a result was booed off stage. Justine, in standard Justine fashion, found this highly amusing and had her two friends, Alwa and Basile, carry Malo off the stage after he had collapsed. I highly suspect that poor Malo Giovini wasn't intoxicated. He was drugged by Justine, who was so depraved and unstable that she wanted to watch the young man destroy his own career. Now, these three men would love her, but of course, she didn't love them back at all. The men would all react differently to Justine's games. Alwa remained infatuated with Justine due to his obsessive fixation on her. He would offer to cut himself and even kill one of the other men, Basile. But what was his reason for him wanting to kill and hurt Basile? Well, Basile reacted very differently to Alwa. He grew tired of Justine's games after she replaced his wine with absinthe and demanded to be let go after she had tied him up. In true Kuchisaki honor fashion, she asked Basile how beautiful she is. Remember how Justine has a fixation on her being as beautiful as her mother was? Well, since her father told her that her mother's beauty was blinding, she expected this as an answer, but poor Basile didn't give her the answer she wanted, so she blinded him. What the f***? And then we get to Malo. After constant manipulation by Justine, the fragile Malo had basically gone completely and utterly insane. These three men had unknowingly become Justine's test subjects and were imprisoned in her cabinet of perturbation. She would go on to torture them and mutilate them, disfiguring them, and then these three would become known as the Suitors. We see in the game that, aside from the Suitors, there were three victims. Just there, rigged up, and waiting for Justine to wake up from her amnesia potion-induced slumber. Let's find out who these three unfortunate souls were. First off, it's stated in the game, fairly early on, that Justine somehow had enough charisma to manipulate the chief of police in Calais, so much so that he would shut down any request to pursue Justine. The request had initially come from Alwa's father, Lucien. It seems that Justine's manipulation of the chief of police ran deep, so not even a nobleman could force an investigation into Justine. Lucien was angry that Justine had led his son astray, and so he sent a letter to an inspector, Marot, and recommended that a Dr. Victor Fournier, an expert in the human psyche, as Dr. Fournier seems to have found a way to legally incarcerate Justine under the reasoning of insanity and being a hysteric. Also enlisted to help was Father Hector David. It didn't go well. Justine, somehow, managed to abduct these three men, and these are the three prisoners or hostages that the player encounters in the Cabinet of Perturbation. Then, as we know, Justine let her suitors go free, shut herself in a cell and gave herself amnesia, leading to the events of the game. In the game, it's revealed that much like Daniel, Justine wiped her own memory. But unlike Daniel, who wiped his memory in order to forget the atrocities he'd committed under the influence of Alexander, Justine seemed to do this only in order to see how she reacted to her cabinet of perturbation, to assess her own psyche and how she would react to her own tests. Justine did the experiment because she wanted to work out if her being sadistic and twisted was from something related to her childhood or whether she was just simply born to be sadistic. The words in the hallway triggered something in her brain despite the amnesia, and she ended the game sadistic again, even after sparing everyone. She says this was the best one yet. She gets a kick out of being evil. Also, when Justine tortured Basile and blinded him, he vowed to kill her. Here is how that conversation went. <laughs> Begin to the phonograph, Basile, mon chéri. Uh, what did you put into the wine? Absent, silly Basile. Strong men like you don't drink wine. Wine is for helpless women, like myself. My head. What is this thing? Get me out. I'm not up for your games. No. <laughs> you have to say it first. How beautiful am I? Plenty. Now let me out of this thing! 
No, that is not what you say. Uh, your beauty is blinding. Ah, my eyes! What have you done to my eyes? Justine, this isn't funny. You've blinded me. Ha ha, can't catch me now. I'll kill you, you whore! Justine knew that letting her suitors loose would pose a direct threat to her, much like Basil, who, as we've just heard, vowed to kill her. And I guess because she tortured and mutilated them all, that's why they all wanted to kill her in the cabin of perturbation. If Justine managed to find all of her father's letters in the library, she would then tell her maid to respond to them, telling them that she is still alive. At the end, after she'd locked the door, sealing in her suitors, it's revealed through a conversation with Clarisse, who, remember, was her childhood friend, who is now her maid, that Justine has invited members of the French aristocracy to dinner, and we all know what for. Whether Justine ever answered for her crimes isn't known. So despite this being set around the same time period as The Dark Descent, and the location in which the game takes place being similar in appearance to Castle Brennenberg, the story takes place somewhere in France, and there's not much of a story connection to The Dark Descent. There is only one real link. Recall when Daniel came back from the expedition in Algeria with the broken orb, and also that he sent letters out to various professionals seeking help with it? Well, Monsieur Flaubel was one of those people. Daniel found Flaubel's name inside Professor Herbert's address book. Herbert had initially written to Monsieur Flaubel in preparation for the Algeria expedition, asking him to vouch for them in regard to their passage into Algeria. Her father also wrote to Professor Thurston Herbert and said that his research failed and he now must focus on repairing the fractured and broken relationship with his daughter. But this didn't happen because, as we've already discussed, Justine killed her father before that could even happen. But that is it for this video. Like I said earlier, I will be doing videos on both A Machine for Pigs and Amnesia Rebirth. So subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss out. Leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help this video travel through the mystic algorithm. But for now, take care and I'll see you in the next one.